In most developed countries, which is where the internet developed, where the internet emerged, the underlying infrastructure of a properly functioning, efficient, uh, almost ubiquitous telecommunication network, uh, backhaul, international connectivity, all these things can be assumed. So you can ride, you can build the internet uh, system on top of a, the proper foundation. In countries like Sri Lanka, uh, you don't, we didn't have that. We had hundreds of thousands of people on waiting lists. We had whole areas of the country that didn't have proper connectivity. Uh, the joke used to be that uh, half the country was waiting for a telephone and the other half was waiting for a dial tone. Uh, <clears throat> so in a situation like that, you had to do the telecom reforms. You had to do rate rebalancing. You had to get the international connectivity uh, organized properly and you had to do a whole series of things. So I was fortunate in 98-99 to participate in that activity and also almost uh, as an afterthought to uh, help in popularizing the internet through programs like Antarjale Obeni Vasita and then of course a very important Saturday magazine program called Shanidai Bhavan. And I have been told several years later of people telling me, you know, we got into this area because of these programs. So that also is important. So the issue with the internet that we have found is that uh, just providing connectivity isn't enough. Uh, that's the necessary con condition. Without that, though, everything else is meaningless. So we have to have connectivity. It has to be affordable. Uh, to a great extent, we've done that, though some of our telecom reforms could still be uh, improved upon. But more or less, we've got that. But then in addition to that, we need a whole ecosystem. We need uh, attractive content that people can use, content, services, applications. We need a literate population, literate not only in terms of the official uh, literacy indicators, like can you write your name in your own language, kind of very minimalistic requirements, which is why you get over 90% people being literate, but digital literacy. You need some kind of trust infrastructure. Uh, so all those things need to be looked at. Now, 15 years ago, when we were uh, developing the East Sri Lanka program, uh, that had, you know, we looked at the infrastructure. There was still work to be done on infrastructure. Uh, some of it within the East Sri Lanka program, some of it by the economic reforms and unit uh, of the government. Uh, and then on that foundation, we had three pillars, e-business, uh, which was a continuation of the work that had been done by the competitiveness initiative where the reports, the consultations had been conducted and all the reports existed, which was very important. And that is, I think, one reason why that part of uh, uh, East Sri Lanka actually had yielded quite good results. And then we had two other pillars called uh, e-society uh, e and uh, e-government. And our idea was that if we made advanced e-gov services available, uh, we would be making things that were available in uh, local languages, uh, e-society, we would come close to the people, uh, and then e-leadership would, would provide a nice structure for this. Um, perhaps we could have done more. 